we promised we would address some of our viewer questions and we've been doing that during the program and a number of the questions have, have been covered off by by your comments already which is which is great so a lot of the main topics are covered but there are a couple of specifics i wouldn't mind throwing out um and getting some brief comments before we wrap up the show because we are approaching the end um i've got a question here from a european operator about hypervisors it's a simple question is the inclusion of a hypervisor at the edge required as a part of this new open RAN software infrastructure that we're talking about. Paul, are you able to come straight back to you and uh, pick up on that one? Sure. So obviously we provide that virtualization layer of technology in these networks. Uh, we're seeing that in the RAN, given that it's mostly greenfield architecture, it's predominantly container-based solutions. Um, we do have the ability to support a hypervisor for certain, you may need a, a singular VM to provide some functionality, for example. Um, but generally, the deployments to date are fully cloud native using container technology based on Kubernetes. Great. Thanks very much, Paul. Um, a question here about servers as well. Um, does the life cycle of COTS servers, which the, the viewer says is shorter than dedicated servers, do, does this impact the uh, choice of operators to go down an open RAN route? Um, does, is, is the server choice uh, uh, an important factor here? Anybody want to, to, Manish, are you able to take a hardware question for us? Yeah, I can, I can take that. I think uh, as I touched on earlier, uh, you know, we went ahead, I mean, as part of our server portfolio, we went ahead and introduced XR8000 as a server very much built for RAN and edge workloads. And as I touch, it offers all the capabilities and meets the requirements that are very much needed for RAN-like workloads, which is shorter form factors, shorter depth servers, NEPS compliance, extended temperature ranges, uh, compliance to that and more. And it's a sled-based design. So this is the other important thing. It provides the future-proof upgradability so you can take continue to take advantage as more silicon innovation comes in in the next gen cycle uh, to really ease of upgrading. The other thing is ease of serviceability, ease of maintainability. So I just want to call this out that yes, there are specific capabilities to again, make that server more robust for the RAN kind of uh, deployment environments. And uh, I would again encourage the viewer to take a look at XR8000. Great, Manish, thank you for that. Um, I'm just looking down here, we have a question that says uh, we focus on the telcos um, and broad market coverage, but what about enterprise sector and private 5Gs? Is, is there um, a role for open RAN there? And will that further continued deployment of open RAN at scale? Uh, uh, Christine, I think, are you able to take that one for us? Sure, yes, and, and, the, and the answer is absolutely. We are going to be the 5G private and enterprise uh, market expand in the next uh, in the next years, this year and the next. Again, that's inevitable. We're going in that direction. And that's the beauty of this architecture that we're, uh, uh, that we're deploying and uh, developing in, in RAN. It's the same, that same architecture can be using 5G private and enterprise. And imagine the amount of developers in the world that know this open common platform, that knows this uh, software that can go and do vertical solutions for this, uh, for this platform. So the, the opportunities and the possibilities are infinite. And, and again, this is the right architecture. That's another point why it's so important to choose the right architecture, one that is being leveraged across multiple, multiple uh, verticals and segments. Great. Thanks very much, Christina. And Paul, did you quickly want to come in on that one as well? Yeah, I'd certainly agree with what Christina said. We're seeing uh, a lot of new applications in automotive manufacturing environments, the use of augmented reality and acceleration in these nodes. The ability to deploy private 5G with an open RAN architecture allows you to leverage that virtualized compute platform in the enterprise environment to add more applications in that stack. And that's something that's very, very unique with an open RAN architecture because you're really using Kubernetes and virtualized infrastructure that you can then host other applications that can help you monetize or simplify your enterprise environment, uh, especially in industrial manufacturing and medical markets. 
Thanks, Paul. Uh, I don't know where the time has gone. Uh, we've covered a lot of ground on the program today. So uh, let's now summarise our discussion and uh, and bring it to uh, a, a conclusion. Because you know, reaching a tipping point means we're on the path towards scale. So let me quickly ask each of you in turn, how do you continue to innovate in order to support this this continued transformation growth? And Christina, I'll come to you first. Absolutely. And this is what we're fully committed to from Intel. We're going to continue investing in our roadmap. We're going to continue listening to our customers and we're going to continue providing the baselines and the foundational of the network architecture to our operators, to the operators in the world so they can get the best results. Thank you, Christina. Um, and Paul, let me come to you next. How are you going to keep on innovating? So I think we're now at a point in time at this tipping point where we've had years of development and deployment exposure to the CAS infrastructure layer, the container as a service architecture for cloud-based deployment. What we're seeing now is the area of innovation is heavily around artificial intelligence and automation to ease the operations burden for the service provider that's trying to manage and deploy applications in this environment. So I think you're gonna see a wave of innovation around the automation problem to help operate these networks as we go forward. Great, thanks very much, Paul. And Manish, sum it up for us then. How, how, do, you, how do you continue this, this rate of innovation? Yeah, I mean, open disaggregated cloud native networks is at the heart of our efforts at Dell Technologies. And our, we have a pretty robust roadmap working with our partners to continue to improve both the server form factors, bring more capabilities uh, to, to, to the service providers, work with partners uh, like we just talked about on the infrastructure block with Wind Rivers to continue to do more integration work and deliver uh, the solutions with continuous innovations on an ongoing basis. But also looking forward, as I touched uh, in, in my answers earlier, uh, AI, machine learning, deep learning, and for that matter, even generative AI. We see that these are going to be very transformational in terms of how networks are planned deployed, operated, optimized, and managed. And this is going to touch all aspects of it. And these are the next set of innovations and areas that we are starting to focus on, building our own set of technologies and portfolios on AI and machine learning, but it's also working with an open ecosystem so we can continuously co-innovate and deliver those innovations to the service providers. Thank you very much, Manish. And, and final comment to Christina, do you have any parting advice for operators who perhaps are on the verge of testing this new approach to RAN deployments? Absolutely. First of all, we're here for you, for the operators to be your trusted partner and or, or, or vendor and advisor. Uh, just look at the data, see what is happening in the world, reuse the blueprints that exist, uh, look at the learnings, reach out to us, and just make it happen. Go for it. Start small, start with what exists today, go to the trial, lab trial, field trials, and then scale. Technology is ready. Let's just get it, get it going. Yep, get it going. Christina, thank you very much indeed. We must leave it there, though. Thank you all so much for taking part in this program. And if you'd like any more information on anything you saw or heard in the program today from any of the presentations or any of the guests, then please do get in touch with us. Or you can follow the links below this video for additional resources. For now, though, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.